Tegus have to be the hobbyist's fan favorite as far as large lizards go. Beautiful, large, active, and just amazing all together. It is no wonder this species is as popular as it is. For with these lizards being, you know, as active and large as they are, they do exhibit some care factors that I think people need to take a look into before they consider purchasing one. So today we're going to be going over everything you're going to need to know as far as tegu lizard care goes with, of course, our five main categories. So let's sit back, relax, and dive into tegu lizard care. So diving into this care guide, we are going to be talking about our five main categories, and that is going to be enclosure size, heating and lighting, humidity, diet, and what to fill the enclosure with. So with that being said, let's dive into our first category, which is going to be number one, enclosure size. As I said in the beginning, tegu lizards are not only large, but they are active. With that being, you know, an enjoyable experience as far as a pet goes, it also means they're going to be needing a large enclosure as well. That being said, as far as a baby tegu lizard goes, I wouldn't put it in anything less than a four foot by two foot by two foot or something similar to it. I think in this stage of tegu's life, it isn't just important to give the animal terrestrial ground, but also something arboreal, you know, even adding something as far as ledges, branches, limbs, things like that to allow your baby tegu to actually climb up as well, while it's still kind of a very young and well light uh, age would be very beneficial to it mentally. That being said, you know, as a tegu does go up in age and then in size, you know, you really want to give something as far as like a six foot by three foot by three foot as a sub adult. And as far as the adult enclosure go, you're going to want something as minimum as an eight foot by four foot by four foot. Yeah, and that eight foot by four foot by four foot is really going to be the minimum. That's just going to be pretty much double the tegu's length as far as it goes, just wide enough where it can turn around without having to, you know, scrape its nose or its tail along the edges. And then of course you're going to want those four foot or four feet tall in order to provide that proper substrate length depth. As far as that goes, it is very important that you provide proper substrate depth. Anything from 18 to 24 inches is very imperative for as far as an adult tegu goes, especially when it's undergoing things such as brumation. It's going to want to bury underground and create its own little burrow, and it's really hard to do that with a four-foot ammo if you're not providing enough substrate in the enclosure. But moving on, let's go into our second category, which is of course going to be heating and lighting. And starting this topic off, let's talk about heating. Now, tegu lizards definitely like it hot, probably hotter than most species you're used to dealing with. As far as basting temperatures go for these guys, they're going to want it anywhere around the 130 degrees Fahrenheit area. And as far as creating that basting spot goes, you're going to want to be using multiple floodlights in order to obtain that. Using something as far as anywhere from like 150 or a 200 watt singular spotlight is going to be a bit detrimental to the animal simply because you're only using one little spotlight that's going to give just a small amount of that heat waves down. As far as a four foot lizard goes, one bulb really just would not do the trick. So the best thing in my opinion is to use multiple lower watt floodlights. Uh, you can get these anywhere from say like any home improvement store like Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, the Part 38 floods. One thing to note that it is very important that you do get the floodlights not the spotlight. Uh, using a spotlight can inhibit burns from the animal. The floodlight is going to spread out that heat in a linear way instead of just having it focus onto one direct spot. Now the number of bulls you're wanting to use for the animal as far as that goes is going to be very dependent on how big the animal is. Uh, for instance, for my tegu right now, he's running at about two and a half, maybe three feet. I'm using two uh, floodlights right now, but as he gets older, I am going to be switching into a three tier system. As far as what bulbs to actually use for the tegu, it's going to be very dependent on a lot of factors such as where you live, how hot your room is, things like that. So it's going to be a bit of a guessing work. Just make sure you have a great infrared thermometer that you're able to accurately read what that basting temp is in order to get the correct temperatures. And then just a little tip for something that really helped me out is creating a basting platform for the animal. Instead of heating up just say the substrate or some sort of bark, I like to use ceramic tiles. This really helps absorb the heat in order to create an accurate and really hot spot for for the tegu to bask on. You can find most of these things again at your local home improvement store. Uh, right now I'm just using the little pillars actually because my tegu actually outgrew the uh, slate tile that I was using. So I just grabbed a, a pillar from outside, uh, gave it a quick wash and disinfect it and then put it right on there and it's been working great for me. Moving on to the second part of this category, let's get into lighting. Now as far as the lighting goes, we're going to be diving into mostly UVB for the tegu because as far as UVB goes, these animals definitely require a lot. 
far as UVB bulbs go for Tegu, you're going to be wanting something that is high output and is able to really penetrate those rays down to the ground because having such a larger glow such as a two feet high or even the four foot high uh, when they're adults. That's why I always recommend the T5 bulbs over something like the T8. The T5 high outputs are just going to be able to penetrate or provide that UVB a lot better. Of course, the brand I most recommend is going to be Arcadia. Uh, the percentage you're going to be wanting is really dependent on how high up your UVB uh, dome is going to be. Uh, for instance, right now I'm using the uh, Arcadia T5 12% uh, UVB, but I have also seen people use 14% as well as far as their enclosures being, or that socket being a little higher than usual. Now, if you're having trouble finding Arcadia brands, I believe the Zoomed 10.0 to also be a good brand. But as far as UVB, I think really think you can't beat Arcadia as far as the output goes. And then moving on from that, let's go into our third category, which is going to be humidity. Humidity is a crucial factor as far as Tegu lizards go, and I think it's something that people really don't take into too much of consideration. It's one of the main reasons why I believe, number one, Tegu lizards really should not be free roamed. You're not going to be able to provide that husbandry care as far as humidity goes inside just an apartment or whatever house you're living in. And then number two, I do believe that these guys really should never be in an aquarium for that reason also. Mini range goes for Tegus, you're going to want to strive to hit something very high. Anything from 70 to almost 90% of you mini range is somewhere you want to be in. A couple ways to ensure that you're able to hit this humidity level is going to be number one, providing a large depth of substrate. Again, this should already be a thing as we mentioned earlier. These tegus love to burrow and dig under and you're not going to be able to have that unless you're having a deep enough substrate. Anything from, like I said, 18 to 24 inches for an adult is really something you need to strive for. And then with that being said, the substrate choice is very imperative as well. Uh, for me, I'm using a bioactive mix of topsoil, peat moss, and just a little bit of play stand to help really form those burrows. It seems to be working wonders for me and it definitely is retaining humidity as it needs to. If you notice that the soil is starting to dry out and your humidity levels are dropping, simply just getting any sort of watering can and watering that substrate enough to the point where they're going to have it enough to retain that moisture again and then to spike the uh, humidity. Now, a couple of other ways that are going to help you providing that proper humidity is of course using something like an automatic misting system and having it set to go off often enough that you're able to hit the you know 70 to um 90 percent range and then of course treating a moist hide with something like i don't know cork bark or any kind of large hide that you can stuff sphagnum moss in to create almost a microclimate that's hitting that humidity and then real quick, if you guys are enjoying the video, if you could do me a huge favor and just go to that lower left hand corner, hit that like button for me, I would really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed already and you are enjoying the video also, that would be a huge plus as well. Thank you guys so much. Now let's move on to our next topic. And going down to our next topic, we are going to be talking about number four, the diet. Now, I believe the diet of the Tegu to really be the most important and most, well, complex thing that happens with when owning a tegu uh, just the fact of this the large variety that tegus require as far as diet goes it's uh it's pretty intense pretty much for that reason and the fact that i don't want to make this into a you know 30 35 minute video i think i'm just going to end up making a separate video going all into the tegu diet needs uh, but i'm just going to quickly just brush up on you know what those are in this video here now, as I mentioned, tegus require such a large variety when it comes to their diet. It's to the point where, I mean, it, it could, you could write a novel with it. Meats, veggies, fruits, insects, chicken, beef, livers, hearts, it goes on and on. Now, the two most important things are to note is number one, the most important thing is going to be having that variety. Feeding the tegu as many different food items as you can is really going to ensure that your tegu is getting all the vitamins and nutrients it's going to need out of each food item. And secondly, and this is a huge tip coming from someone that didn't do this with their baby tegu, try to get them on vegetables as soon as possible. While tegus or babies do need more of a protein when they're still growing into that phase, you know, of under a year, um, I do think it's important to at least introduce fruits and veggies. For when they're older, it's a little tricky trying to get them acclimated to eating that instead of just these proteins. And all right, coming down to our last category, we are going to be talking about number five, what to fill the enclosure with. Now, when you have such a large space as far as the Tegu enclosure goes, I mean an 8 foot by 4 foot by 4 foot enclosure, that leaves a lot of room to fill stuff with. Uh, number one, the most important thing, we've talked about it a few times already, is of course going to be that substrate. You're going to want to be a solid human substrate with a depth of at least 18 to 24 inches for a Tegu. And then really you can get real creative as far as the decorations go for them. These include, you know, logs, branches, limbs, basking areas, things like this, really getting 
creative. I know I've seen some creators uh, create stuff like basking hides where it's a hide and a platform at the same time while others like myself are creating these logs and putting branches on top still giving some sort of an arboreal feel where they can climb up on something if they feel like it. The list goes on and on of how you can create you know this little ecosystem inside your tegu's enclosure. Uh, it's a big perk when working with large lizards just the fact that you have this great space to work with and really create something unique. Unfortunately and something to note is the fact that getting these large branches and tunnels things like that you're not gonna find it at a pet store so unfortunately you guys are gonna have to put you know your wild man hats on and venture out in the woods to forge your own decorations for your tegu. And alright guys, that's going to wrap up the video for today, but now it's your turn. Leave me a comment in the comment section on one tip you would give a new Tegu Keeper. And as always, if you liked the video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my animals or my breeding products, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at DBCB Exotics. Other than that, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.